We were joined again by Rich, um, my good friend from Dubai. Um, it's quite cool to say that in my own living room, that we're speaking <laughs> from England to Dubai. So, um, Also, I would recommend if people haven't already, checking out the three-part mini-series of Rich and as well. Very, very insightful. And today's topic is going to be on uh, overcoming uh, the potential weight gain people might have faced over lockdown and getting back in shape. So if you could, Rich, people might not have seen that mini-series. Could you just give sure. a brief introduction who you are and what you do? Okay, uh, should try and be more summarized than the last time. Um, <laughs> okay, so you and I have known each other oh, uh, for probably about 10 years, if not a bit longer, um, mostly apart from our conversations, uh, yeah. purely from an online basis. Um, I joined the military at 18 as an aircraft engineer, um, did that, for a few years, transferred to being a soldier, served that the rest of my nine years. Towards the end of my career, I had a few quite serious injuries, which encompassed like periods of stays in hospital. And during the course of that time, I started to see the value for learning rehabilitation, biomechanics, all that kind of stuff, as well as the virtues of being very, very good at being very, very fit. And I already knew what I wanted to do was a career when I left the military. So when I left after nine years, I put all my time and effort and all the funds entitled to me into going back to high level education, got qualified um, way back now, seems just a long time ago, uh, <laughs> as, as a therapist, as a trainer, as a specialist, as much as I could. And I got offered a job here in Dubai. Um, I thought it last me six months. It will last me six months. It's an experience. I was only like 27 at the time. Uh, and I'm nearly 40 now, <laughs> um, and uh, I've been in the Middle East ever since. Um, apart from about an 18-month stay when I was working in Saudi Arabia, I've lived over here, cool. and I've, I've gone from working as a quote-unquote conventional trainer up to working with uh, superbike riders, GT drivers, uh, all that kind of stuff, um, various different royal families around the world, and I've started to peruse myself into more specialised niches. As we talked about, how many weeks or months ago was it the last uh, time? It, it doesn't feel that long ago, but I think it was about no. maybe three weeks, four weeks, something, something like okay. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've just started returning back to uh, one of my loves, which is triathlons and Ironman. So I've taken more clients from that kind of world, which in fact, I have another webinar I'm doing this, this Saturday, which I will put on my social media sure. <laughs> in the next few days. Absolutely. Yeah. Sounds good. But, uh, yeah. That's basically me up to current day. So living and loving it in the sunshine, although I would sooner it wasn't 50 degrees as it is at the moment every day. Very jealous. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so that, that's me. That's where I'm coming from. Cool, cool. That's awesome, Richard. Um, I find that you're almost like a James Bond of the fitness world. Like You just seem so <laughs> cool. And, you know, like your portfolio and your, your client base and stuff, it's quite impressive. I mean, I was I, I didn't really know about that until I re-looked on your website. And, and mm. uh, yeah, quite impressive. And um, in terms of that then, Rich, so if we start off talking about uh, lockdown, I actually was quite cool. inspired by one of the posts you'd put. I think it was um, 2022.0 when you were saying about mm. kind of yeah. redefining and reliving 2020 the right way. Um, could you just sure. kind of elaborate on that because I was quite inspired by that title. Okay. Um, well, I mean, we all know that everyone goes around the, the calendar typically with weight gain, weight loss, weight gain, weight loss, you know, pre-summer vacation, thrash myself for a bit, starve myself for a bit, come back and repeat in January. Um, so the purpose of, of that video that I put together for YouTube was, okay, right. I mean, I, can, I made this a couple months ago now, but it was whenever things start to ease and return to a, a more conventional uh, lifestyle, why don't we take that return, especially now in the UK, because gyms have just opened again, yeah. um, take it as a, a second January, uh, another another bite of the cherry as it was, because, all right, we've had this elongated period where people have been less active than they always might be, maybe haven't been eating as well as they could have been because they're stuck in ho at home and less chance to go to the supermarket and pick up the fresh food and everything else. And I'm sure, like in the, like here back in the UK, delivery, et cetera, has been getting a hammering. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's a case of, do I make my own lunch? Order. Do I make my own dinner? Order. You know, and good food or not so much good food. You do that for a period of months, you know, clothes fit a bit differently. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea was when you can return to going for your walk or every day or you cycle or you go to the gym, let's treat this as a chance to have a, another go at the regime, another go at addressing those habits that we've got into that we don't really want to make long term. Definitely love that. Love that. Yeah, it's it's definitely another opportunity to start again fresh, and it's kind of like hitting the reset button. 
and mm. uh, doing it again properly. Um, it's interesting because at the start of lockdown, I was probably the fittest I've ever been. And I didn't use it as an excuse to like not stay in shape. So I was running outside. I did, I think it was 12 sessions a week online doing a circuit. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did, I think, running four, four days a week. And then I did some bodywork training on my own. So it was like the fittest I've ever been, Rich. I know this is probably yeah, like yeah. a warm-up for yourself. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, and, and then towards the end of it, um, I think because I had been dieting, I think, probably about three or four months, even when I was eating the kind of, you know, very high volume of foods, I was not feeling full. I was constantly thinking about food. So I had to kind of slowly come out of the, the deficit and start trying to eat a little bit more and uh, mm -hmm. go into a bit more of a maintenance phase and slowly backing down on my exercise. And now I actually feel great, but I'm slightly heavier, but uh, I feel a lot a lot better and a lot, I feel full <laughs> again. So, um, so in terms of that then, I think there's two camps with people going back into the gym. There's the, the kind mm. of already gym goers who have been kind of on a bit of hiatus and uh, were kind of ruined to go into the gym. And then also the other camp is people who may have just put weight on in lockdown and then looking to get in shape for the very first yeah. time. So I would like to address the complete beginner first. So anything right, you could right. maybe recommend, Rich, to try and get people back in shape who have never been in shape before? Mm. Um, okay, so the complete beginner, the, the newbie. Um, I would say don't try and achieve a whole new semblance of physique in the first week. That's generally the most stressful idea you can ever walk into a gym or exercise class with it going, right, I'm going to go at this, you know, think Bridget Jones the movie where she has a bad <laughs> breakup and goes, sits on a bike for three hours in the gym and, and the legs don't work. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you are not going to undo the last few months of what might be an indulgent lifestyle. You're not. So just take it as right, okay. I've got to get used to the stress of exercise to elicit a, a change, to get me stronger, to get me fitter. I've also got to get used to the recovery that comes with that, which is something that gets overlooked by so many people that don't have a, a genuinely good, wise voice in their ear. You know, I mean, I'm realizing, and I was talking about this with a client of mine this morning, so it's 10 past three in the afternoon here, um, the fact that I'm 40 next March. And one of the things that I seem to have noticed in the last few years is that I think I respond quicker to stress than I used to physical stress exercise than maybe I did 10 years ago. Wow. But because it's a case of, oh shit, put your effort into this and get it right first time so you'd have to repeat it kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But my recovery period is longer than it used to be. You know, if I go hardcore in the gym, squats and deadlifts in the same session, I will feel that two days later. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I was 29 or 39, they were like, yeah, okay, I feel it in my hamstrings, but we're all good. So you, you've got to take the, the recovery of your new regime seriously. So start thinking two or three times a week, you're going to be more active than you have been. And be happy with that. You're going to go in there, you're going to make it look like it's going to be a worthwhile venture or you won't stick with it because you'll just go, what's the point? This is too easy. You know, exert yourself, feel like you put some effort in, get sweaty, get hot and go, yeah, you know what? That was worth my time. Do that two or three times a week. And don't panic about your nutrition. This is one of my main rules to newbies. Address the quality of what you eat for one or two weeks when you begin your exercise and leave it there. Don't panic about portion size. Don't panic about, I can't eat this food, I can't eat that food. Eat healthier than you do, than you have done. Let your body adapt to the change in nutrition because that's going to cause all kinds of reactions straight away. You'll maybe you'll stop retaining water. You'll increase this vitamin and this mineral that you're deficient in. Yeah. Let that adaption take place. That's enough of a thing to worry about. So shop differently and start exercising. That's two stresses to your lifestyle all at once. And that's manageable. Love that. If you go the route of extreme diet, extreme exercise, you're going to be so head over heels with, oh my God, this is terrible. Oh my God, I can't maintain this. Yeah. You won't. Simple as that. All right? You know, think of it as literally, like you said, 2022.0, where you've still got four or five months left give yourself till christmas yeah yeah love that love that yeah i really like that you say that about nutrition it's actually a kind of a, a fundamental when i have my own clients as well um try not to focus too much on creating these humongous changes with your eating sometimes mm. even just the exercise stimulus alone it will cause a mass especially if you're not new to that training stimulus you will see quite a big difference if you keep it up and it's yeah, absolutely. You know, structured and well planned 
and uh, and then worry about the nutrition later. And do you feel as well, Rich, with people with nutrition that most people have a certain way of eating and you just have to make small adjustments to it? Um, there's been a few people where I've had to like say this is just unbelievably nonsensical, like eating a packet, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, eating a packet of crisps for breakfast and then uh, yeah, a snicker, yeah. uh, and that's it for the day and stuff like this. But mm-hmm. it's very, very rare. Most people have relatively good habits. The common thing that might be from some of my clients was just having a little bit more water, a bit more fiber, increase your protein. That's a general thing, but for the most part, they reason them pretty well. And um, for the newbie though. Um, is there any kind of nutrition tip you would maybe focus on then um, as, a, as a starting point once the training is in place? Uh, okay, so you, you decided to, you're going to go for a walk every day with the, the, the partner, the wife, the girlfriend, the husband, boyfriend, and the dog, wherever that might be, your exercises, that's addressed. It comes to your nutrition. Um, the easiest way to give you a set of guidelines, I tend to say, is imagine you live on a farm. You've only got access to what comes out of the ground, comes off a plant or what you've you caught and banged on the head yep. you know and, and if you go from that as the mainstay of your meals and the mainstay of your snacks you eliminate so much straight away i'm not saying never have those foods again never touch alcohol again because again that's massively unrealistic yeah because you know if you say to someone who's not had the best choices for a period of months or even year guess what all that's now forbidden yeah, very shortly, they just tell you what they think of you and walk away. <laughs> um, so if you turn around and go, right, okay, for the next couple of weeks, just think about what it is you get, you know, what would you have in the, in the vegetable garden? What would come off a tree in an orchard? You know, if you're a vegetarian, use a bit of intelligence to make sure you get enough of your protein and take You don't have to step away from your principles, or you can stay with that, that's fine. But think about the most natural resources possible and go from there. Because straight away, again, the huge increase in nutrients will have a huge effect on your body. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we live in this, I think I, talk, I said to you the last time we spoke, this fantastic chassis that we, that we occupy that wants to be healthy and strong. Half the time, we're the ones stopping it from being so. <laughs> yeah. You know? Absolutely. That, that's the easiest way to go about it. Yeah, love that, love that. Uh, yeah, I kind of say with nutrition, it's like inherently quite a sinful concept, but we insist yeah. on making it complicated. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think, yeah, very much the case. Yeah, very, very much so. And, um, you know, I think as well in terms of like adherence and stuff like that as well, like if, if you've been eating a certain way for 30, 40 years or whatever it is, mm-hmm. um, to make this, you know, uh, you have a list or a manual of do's and don'ts and forbidden and acceptable foods to just completely just take all that away and introduce something completely new it's probably not going to work but you can get yeah. something that's pretty similar to what you're doing now with little minor adjustments you yeah, know absolutely. trying to not fall into the trap of crisp for breakfast and stuff like this and, <laughs> oh my god oh, um, hey, i've had a conversation in this past week with someone who would um pretty much the same topic not crisps okay but um <laughs> yeah i i had someone who made me put my head in my hands and just <laughs> As, oh, I was like, okay, that's got to stop. Yeah, you know, yeah, that has to change. Yeah, yeah, I do think it's actually in my own experience not as not as common as people probably think. A lot of people say, "Oh, I just eat crap all the time," but when you look at the diet, it isn't actually as bad as they think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but yeah, there have been like some completely <laughs> nonsensical things, and it's just I've had to almost. Uh, rewire the entire diet from um, you know from the foundation upwards. So, uh, yeah. But in terms of that, yeah, and then. In terms of the person who is the gym goer, who has actually done a bit of hiatus from the gym and kind of looking to yeah. kind of get back in shape, maybe put back on a bit of muscle they may have lost or uh, mm-hmm. trim a, a little bit of fat they might have put on, would you say to them, that, would you modify their routine, Rich, or would you just say, do what you previously did, like done before? Um, I mean, obviously, you have to ta- you have to tamper this with the, the individual knowledge of the individual you're working with, you know, the specificity of... 25, 45, really active, moderately active, but regular. You know, you'd you have to look at the individual for this. But I would say, right, you've, again, you've been less than active for yourself for the last two, three, four months. Think about the fact you spent a lot more time sat down than you used to, probably in too soft furniture. So you're going to be a little bit stiff in the back, in the legs, the hips. So when you start back in the gym, make sure you're thorough with your warm up. Make sure you're thorough with your movement. Maybe for the first two, three, four weeks, maybe even a month. Make sure there's a hefty degree of body weight movements in your program because that will get you moving all of your joints and all your muscle groups smoother and better 
without any specific half an hour warm up, which you don't want to have to do, you know, yeah. go into uh, exercises like that. And I would say, if you're going to go back to a regime you're doing in the past without talking to anybody else, give it a 50 or 60 percent uh, of the intensity that you were doing right before the gym closed, right before your routine was interrupted. And again, stick with that for a few weeks, because if you've got that past Sabbath history, you're not going to have to wait very long to get back to that again. But again, if you try sprint out the gates, you yeah. are going to pay for it. You know, you're going to pull something or you're going to end up with a month of doms coming your way, which you just really don't want. <laughs> so yeah, yeah get, go back into it at a sensible pace um, and just go, yeah, well, you know, I haven't forgotten how to exercise. You just got to get back to the same speed you were at before. Yeah, yeah, love that, Rich. Um, that's a great answer as well, Rich. Um, in terms of lockdown, Rich, is there anything in terms of lockdown that you're actually quite grateful for it for it happening? Um, I know for myself it's been a few things, but anything you could maybe think of yourself? Sure. Um, actually, yeah, because having the the extra hours in a day that I wouldn't otherwise get. I mean, I tend to work pretty much flat out because I like doing that. Yep. But it also means I can take on two or three things at a time with which if I had one less, it'd be less stress. So that's given me a bit of a chance to work with that. Um, it's given me a bit of time to work with the clients that I already had long distance, you know, tailor their their thinking a, a little bit more because they've maintained throughout the lockdown process you know i have a couple of clients that i'm seeing now that i had pre-lockdown coming back to the gym and all we did was they've not had a break we tailored their routine to go right you can now train at home in your apartment or in your house yeah if you don't already have one buy a trx buy a sandbag buy two sandbags buy you know kettlebell whatever you've got strength sessions you've got body weight sessions you've got endurance sessions two or three days a week and they're just sliding back into the gym now, going like a never been away. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I, I've had a bit more time to, to read and, and build up on some bits and pieces that I, I, you know, that the list that we all have of, I will sit down and read these books that I've got on the coffee table, or I will, I've got 14 PDFs and three lectures I've got to get through that I just don't find the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, all of which are for the betterment of my knowledge and my own training programs. That's That's been one of the single biggest things that i take from this to go oh cool i sat and read about this which i was never going to get around to yeah 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 i know that feeling rich yeah i mean i had the uh buying books addiction for quite a while where i would just mm -hmm. accumulate these books and never read them <laughs> and yes uh, yeah kept dust really and um, definitely though yeah I, I personally found as well uh, for myself i mean in terms of my relationship with my fiance now um it was quite a rocky road before because um because of the just crazy hours I was working. I was first mm -hmm. working two jobs, 40 hours a week in one job, and then trying to do personal training all around it. And it was just insane, like 16, 17 hour days. It was just like yeah. crazy, crazy brutal. So it was yeah. actually quite nice to come away from that. And then that, that is something that I noticed a bit as well, because my wife, um, we've not been married that long. In fact, it's our anniversary in just over a month. Um, so thank you very much. But you know, okay, we, we, we got married and we settled into quote unquote normal life, um, which is if you wake up five days a week, one of you goes to work first, the other one goes to work, you get back together in the evenings, then you've got your weekends, right? Yeah. All of a sudden, slam together, I'm working from home, she's working from home. Yeah. You know, it, it did us some good to have a bit of a break from work stress, but also it helped us maybe appreciate each other a bit more, a little bit of an emotional education because, right, yeah. oh shit. You're here all the time. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was, it's been good in a lot of ways. I mean, obviously, you get under each other's feet now again, but. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a given. Yeah, yeah, love that, Rich. In terms of goals for like post lockdown as well, Rich, do you have any kind of big projects underway? I know you mentioned some things before. Um, yes. Um, the uh, that, that program that I want to put out for, for PTs to use to aid with their clients and for Jim, Jim Neebies themselves, I'm still working on that. Okay. Although I am testing that at the moment. I've got, I'm nearly finished at the point where I am going to send it to you. I cool. will stick with my bread on that one. Cool, cool. Uh, um, but so, yeah, so I'm going through that now with the premises that I work from with our, because it's a protocol for all new clients for our gym. Right, fantastic. It's already been adopted. It's being used as, as we speak. Um, and I've I know a few people in different locations, so at the moment I, I ran it through uh, with uh, a former Olympic swimmer wow. uh, who still swims competitively. She she won five medals last year at masters level, four wow. golds and a bronze. So she went through the same protocol testing as a forty five year old who hasn't trained in three years. 
Brilliant. And we went, okay, cool, right. Well, guess what? You now cycle a lot you do triathlons. This knee moves the way it shouldn't. Your thoracic spine's a bit too stiff, blah, 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 blah. She was like, oh, wow, you can tell all that. Went, Absolutely. Here's what we're going to do to fix it. Um, so working on that. Um, a few bits and pieces. Um, what was, and there's potentially... What the hell was I going to say? Yeah, oh, my personal challenge. A friend of mine in the UK, he was all of five foot five and a former gymnast, sent me the challenge. He goes, why don't you try and learn how to do a handstand? I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, a six foot four and 19 stone, that's going to be a piece of piss. Not. Um, so, yeah, I've got uh, eight weeks to try and master that, and I'm three weeks in. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. I've yeah, seen your videos as well. Yeah. That's awesome. an interesting sensation for your shoulders, having never been upside down before unless you fall <laughs> off something. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've got various people I know from the gym making uh, gentlemen's agreements. Will he do it? Will he not? Will he do it? Will he not? <laughs> well, that, well, that. Awesome. Yeah. So it sounds like a quite a busy road ahead. So in terms of that, I've already. I know you mentioned about books just before. Is there any kind of mm. personal development book that you've read that's been quite inspiring, quite impactful? Oh, um, to be honest, I'm trying to think now because one of those questions where you ask me, my brain goes blank. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same with music. It's always um, music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I would say probably some of the best ones I've read of recent times are the Tim Ferriss book. In fact, I can see it now. The <laughs> Tribe tri- of oh, my bookshelf over there. Um, Tribe of Mentors is a oh, good yeah. book. Yeah. Um, have you read that? I've, I've heard of it. Yeah. I know okay, it. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, the premise of that is uh, Tim Ferriss, for those of you who don't know who he is, has got a very well renowned podcast and lots of friends in all kinds of industries and fields. And he set himself the goal of, can I compile a book that puts out a lot of information from a lot of very well-established individuals, from finance, law, um, entrepreneurs, tech, actors, politicians, doctors. So he he sent out over a thousand emails to people he knows, like actors we all know, athletes we all know, CEOs, billionaires, and asked them seven or eight or nine questions and said, look, I don't expect to get all of this back, but what I'll do, I'll turn it into a book. So you've just got every person that comes back is a chapter. You've got two or three pages each, but you are oh, Schwarzenegger's in there. There's a huge number of people. And it's asking them questions on what is, what's one of the key things that they did to achieve X? What was something they would have done differently? What did the process of making it teach them? And other things like that. And it's, it's yeah. a very enlightening, easy read to go, okay, this person struggled with this, this, and this, but they managed to use the experience to achieve something else or something better or to get a better version of their original goal. And I think that's very, very readable. It's also a very good lesson that don't think that progress is linear. No, it's a meme that progress is not a straight line. You end up going everywhere to get where you want to get to. Yeah. Um, that's a very good book. Uh, Freakonomics, the books by the two Stevens, are good books uh, by economists. Uh, how you look at solving problems in business and everything else from a mathematical point. That's cool. Uh, just little things like that. Um, I mentioned his book, his most recent book, the last time we spoke, Ross Edgley's. Um, the second one he wrote after the Great British Swim, where he swam around the whole of the Great uh, British Isles. There's some insights into that relevant to exercise and perseverance and cons- uh, consistency with an objective That's cool. that are very, very, very good. And I would recommend, recommend that to anybody who wants to go right. If I even have an Atlantis objective, how would I think about it? Yeah, What's my goal? Is it extrinsic? Is it intrinsic? Am I doing it for my own personal benefit? Or am I doing it because I want to benefit someone else? Yeah. Yeah. You know, get to understand your reasoning deep down as to why you're doing something. Mm. Well, which I think makes everyone's journeys that bit easier. If you know the genuine reason, you know, let's take our fields. You know, I know you're going back to support them education, but... Yeah. As a, as a coach, someone comes to you and goes, I want to lose 10 pounds or 10 kilos. Why? Oh, well, well, you know, I want to look at him. Why? Let's talk about this. It turns out their sister's just done it. Right, okay. So it's 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 opinions of your peers, not for your own health. Yeah. Just little things like that. You, if you start to unearth the realities of situations, you can plan the journey a lot more constructively. Yeah, love that, love that. It reminds me of kind of the book by Simon Sinek, start with why... Um, and um, there's one of the, my favorite books called um, Way of the Superior Man, and he says that mm-hmm. at, the, at the masculine core of both men and women is this yeah. kind of core life purpose, and there's all these kind of superficial layers, you know, all these super concentric circles, and then yes. at the core of it, there is a, a deep, meaningful kind of soul purpose.